So did the celery? Sorry guys. <laughs> can I see you now? Beige and cherries. No. Beige and cherries. Cherry tree. These ones actually taste pretty darn good. It tastes different to the ones by over me. Yeah. So these cherries are so good. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the bird is talking. Oh, Hi. Thank you. Hello. hello. Are you going to say hello to me? Hello. You playing shy. Okay. Oh, well. okay. Yeah, that's funny. You almost bit him. <laughs> yeah, I barely can see him. Hi there. Wow, dude. That is fast. <laughs> but we're here for this. Lying down. Yeah. But it, that is not practical. Like right. right. We did this because in our first, um, this was this is about the three, uh, and we refill these. And you know, handcrafting is a term that's quite loosely used because it sounds good. But in real terms, that's exactly what Eddie is doing. He's handcrafting. He's taking the, the, the pot still, and he is boiling the alcohol, the alcohol off of it. And he's using rectifying column to split it into the various components, which is the heads, the heart, and the tail. And he makes a, a, a definitive decision as to when to turn on and off these valves. And by doing so, he is he's redirecting the flavor profile of the rum coming off at the various stages. start to interact with one another and that caramel uh, um, vanilla sort of flavors start to kind of coalesce a lot stronger than they would be right off the still. Then you have the five-year-old which is just showing you the how the, the barrel starts to impart the taste to the to the rum and then we have a 15 uh, which is the, the, the rum that um, that we purchased in 2006 and then the 22, it's not 20, it's 22, because of course, we, with the rum we initially bought, we have to change the label into suit its age, because it's just one, one kind of basket of rum that's, that's aging through time. All right, and then oh, under the red, on top of the red napkin is the syrup. So I guess what we could do is start with the syrup, just to show you where the origins of the flavors come from. 
And anytime you want, there's some water that you can cleanse your palate if you want. Yeah. <laughs> is this what um, Beijing call crack liquor? Or? Yeah, I mean, crack liquor is that right. that has been left in a bottle and natural fermentation has uh, occurred. Right. Okay. Growing up, I was accustomed to a plane. Uh, <laughs> they don't have to drink water. Yeah. But that is the stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's and good. so, and the, the thing about it is, is that this gives you a good understanding of where all the flavors are going to come yes. from. Now, molasses now is going to be a bitter sweetness, whereas right, this, yeah. this here is like a citrus sweetness. Yes. Yeah. My grandfather would have teach me to drink it with some water. Yeah. So, about this much in a glass, and the rest is water. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so does white rum never get aged in barrels at all? It just it, it's just straight off the skin, is it? Um, mostly. I mean, there are there are companies that will um, age it and then run it through charcoal to remove the color. Okay. Um, so that's a, a technique of making it more palatable, you know. Right. But honestly, we have we. Do not need to do that because of, as I was saying, the very um, precise control over the the product, the temperature, and the interacting with with, with uh, copper. So the pot still is a copper still that's constantly clean. The rectifying column is all copper. But then on top of that, there's 400 pound maze of copper that all the vapor has to go through before it actually comes out. So that's why the the white rum, as you taste it is going to be palatable and also have a reasonably uh, smooth finish. So we could start there now if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. left hand side, yes. What, what percentage are they all? Does it change much? No, no, all 40% here. Yeah. We do produce a white rum that's overproofed to 60 and a cast strength five year old that's 60 also. <laughs> so would you have it with ice water or ice water? Yeah, I mean you could any of those. Any of those, anything <laughs> like that. I mean you you could even, um, you know the the French do like a petit pain, which is like a, a punch that is essentially squeezed lime juice, a little bit of, of, of syrup and white rum, and it has like a strong uh, kind of sharpness to it. This is makes an, a wonderful um, lime daiquiri. Anything that you're looking for, like a clean palate, oh, yeah. a lime daiquiri, fantastic. When we were at Rum Fest, in, which is the festival in England uh, in October, um, the bartenders were next door, and they would take our white rum and they'd mix up lime daiquiris and hand them out. Come on, we drink free wine. Where's, where's, where's Rum Fest? Rum Fest is in, in the UK. <laughs> where, where that? It's in London. You have never heard of it? No. Oh yeah, it's in London. It happens middle of October every year. Well, it didn't happen last year, and it's going to happen this year. Yeah. And it's it's um, where precisely? It's in London. It's, um, it's um, on Brompton Road at the Islet Conference Centre, which would be yeah. Um, it's like an Ibis Hotel Conference Centre. Are you going this year? No, no. Unfortunately, not. No. No, we um, we are trying to recuperate from <laughs> lack of tourism yeah. because that's another problem we face is that we sell all of our rum here, or 98%. So with the downturn, tourism has also been in downturn of rum. <laughs> that hasn't affect, affected the other distilleries because that's they they basically export. You know? yeah. Yeah. Do you sell all wine? We do, but only in a limited way to build the brand recognition. So, we, for instance, in England, which is, this is where our original market was 10, 15 years ago, and we still cater a lot to the English market. So, in London, um, there are a few online stores like Master of Malt and um, Whiskey Exchange and a drink, Drinks.com. That one was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, it has, we call it a see through because um, you would know this. Um, it, Borovitis calls white rum, uh, going back many generations, um, see-through, and, and it's from a very simple term, it's, you can see through it, it's, yeah. you know, it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> so the Bajan dialect is see-through, as opposed to saying clear. Okay, so um, now we, we get into that understanding of where we're going with the rum when you taste the five. 
Now the five-year-old is is really made with syrup or juice, as they would say, not molasses. But it still has the barrel is now starting to impart that fruity um, kind of complexity to, to, the, to the actual rum. <laughs> when you're um, um, two things I always try to, to say to, to people is that the, everybody is very unique in how they can um, they can um, discern the various flavors on, on, on the palate and it's always good to, to do uh, spirit tasting with friends because a friend will say to you, oh, I, I can taste the licorice, for instance, which is something I couldn't get. And immediately you connect with it. Whereas, so it's good to do tasting with friends, you know? I've got a little vanilla. <clears throat> yes. We did some oh, champagne tasting, windy champagne tasting a few weeks ago. And the guy said, the only thing you need to learn out this tasting is that if you're never in doubt, Sam can taste brioche. <laughs> <laughs> What I must say is not wrong. I mean, if you hear some of the um, online uh, tasting profiles, that how they get them, I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> flowery with the kind of um, text and narration of it is just amazing. We now are going to transition to the molasses rum. All right, and remembering that the molasses rum is coming from a source that's more bittersweet because molasses is a byproduct of making sugar, so they've removed the sugar from it. And by making sugar, you add lime to clarify it, so it has, can, uh, has elements in it. It's not as pure as our syrup is that you tasted on the napkin. You know? So you can. <laughs> yeah. So here we are going to move on to the 22 now, and this um, would be the original rum that we started St. Nicholas with. Mm -hmm. Come this far, yeah. So have you bottled all of it, or have you left no, it? No, no, no. Uh, it, yeah. You know, once we all talked about the six percent and mm. ending up, the, the problem that that happens, uh, well, not problem for us, but the the cost of the rum rises dramatically right, okay. because we only have ten barrels left. And those 10 barrels would represent the only 10 barrels of this rum that exists. Because Richard, of course, never allows his rum to go this old. The, the premium, the point of best return for rums is around 12 years old. Right. Because that's where people generally find the rum is, is most desirable. And they'll sell a lot more 12 year old than they will 18 year old rum. So big distilleries, just to the numbers, they make sure that all of their vintage is sold out by 12 years or put in stainless steel, which will stop the aging process. What's the rum market doing kind of globally? Is it increasing? increasing? Premium, premium rums. Yeah, I mean, we started here at St. Nicholas just as rum was taken off. And now it's consolidated into uh, a few categories. Um, the really super premium rums, which would be like the 22 and the 15. And then you have the, the intermediate age in rums. And then you have a whole other kind of industry of rums that are trying to match the premium rums, you know. There's a whole section of rums, which I won't mention the names. But um, they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to match the premium status but not go through the pain of, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, uh, sorry, right? Yeah, yeah. like so we <laughs> yeah. That wasn't my favourite. <laughs> what was your favourite? I think the five year old. That, that was the easiest to drink, I think. It's yeah. very yeah. smooth. I like, yeah. I like the five year old too. That, that tastes more akin to stuff. I like the aromas of the five year old. My name is Boxing Nicholas. There's a chap that's down the bottom of the hill down, down in, in um, Mount Porter. And he makes them. So I just keep getting to make them and, and some of them I don't sell and some I do. And I just sold one, I saw her packaging a blue one. But I have some in my office too which I keep, you know. And then of course one of the simplest of all toys was this one. Oh my goodness! Right? And, and all we would do as boys is just, just run along and steer it, you know. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And these were made by somebody in the village that, that 
was designated as a toy maker. That's yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so so interesting. Yeah. I'm happy that you all were able to come, and I'm uh, sorry the other group were, were, um, weren't able to make it. Yeah, you all weren't able to make it. You wouldn't have been able to double up. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. So that was a full day of activity. We had some rum, we had some great food. We had a great experience here at St. Nicholas Abbey today. The train ride was so cool. So cool. She's fussy about her flavor all around. <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be nice. Honestly, guys, the team here at St. Nicholas Abbey is amazing. They really give us the full nine years and we are forever thankful. Mm -hmm. We do advise both locals and tourists come to St. Nicholas Abbey. If you wanna see, it's great for kids, one. Because yep. we've got the train right. Yep. We've got lots of grounds for them to run around. They've got parrots, parrots that actually talk to you. The kids will love that. They're for huge. The, yes. <laughs> and for the adults, there are rum tastings, there is food, there is history, everything in one place at St. Nicholas Abbey. Yes. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm here enjoying some crack liquor, aka syrup. <laughs> this is for sale as well, the syrup. Yes. yes. Yeah. Look. Yeah? Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so come on down for the full experience. Okay guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the, the next one.